Hey guys, we're about to start getting into some totally new stuff. Um, you may have done a little bit of stuff with exponential functions, or at least evaluating things with exponents on it, so we're going to start with that. Um, we'll get into some new stuff where you have to play with some bases, and then the next section after this, 4.3, we're going to start doing something um, where we start solving for x, which will be something totally new, which we haven't done for a while. Um, quick basic definitions and some really kind of idiot proof things. Um, an exponential function and exponential functions. Oops. is a function where the variable is part of the exponent. So f of x is equal to a to the x power. Um, there may be a constant out front. You can add and stuff. But the big thing is that your x is up in the exponent. Um, so what they're going to end up asking you to do is going to say it's things like functions. And it's just, again, so you can just get the basics down on how to do it. Um, evaluate f of x when, th when f of x is 3 to the x power and when g of x is equal to 5 to the x minus 3 power for each of these different values. Um, and so what you would just simply end up doing here, so f of negative 1 is just going to be 3 to the negative first power. So that's going to be 1 third. All of your exponent rules that we did back earlier, you're going to have to go through and review. Um, there's a couple more that we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, so g of negative 1 is going to be 5 to the negative first minus 3 power. That's going to be 5 to the negative fourth. That's going to be 1 over 625. No decimals, OK? In general, Oops. no decimals. Um, the places where this would be different would be, for example, like what you see over here in D, where they have x is equal to 1.63. 1, uh, 1 but if they give you an integer, keep everything in terms of uh, fractions. And that will hold true for um, reality checks and assessments as well. So for B, again, 3 to the fifth. Um, sorry, f of 5, 3 to the fifth power. So that'll be 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. And this is where actually going through and spending some time making remembering what your powers are will be helpful as well. So you get 3 squared, so that's going to be 9. Um, C, um, all the half powers and stuff come up, so f of 3 halves. I end up being um, 3 to the 3 halves power. So that's going to end up being 3 to the 3rd raised to the 1 half power. So in other words, that's going to be the square root of 27. Because 3 to the 3rd is 27, the 1 half root, one half exponent is a root. Um, likewise, if I do g of 3 halves, um, you're going to have 5 to the 3 halves minus 3 power, so that's going to be 5 to the negative 3 halves power. So now you're going to get the square root of, um, that's going to be 5 to the 3rd raised to the 1 half power. So of 1 over 125. So however you want to rationalize that, you can. Um, let's say this is going to be square root of 1 over the square root of 125. So that's going to be 1 over 5 root 5. So when I rationalize that, that's going to be root 5 over 25. And then for part D is, OK, D is 1.63. So so it's going to be 3 to the 1.63 power. Guys, you should have said something. Do, do, do. It should have been a 5. It should have been 5 squared. OK, fine. 5 to the 5 minus 3 equals 5 squared. And that's going to be 25. So for something like in D, what you're just going to do is you're going to take out your calculator, and you're just going to simply type it in. So this is going to be 3 to the power of 1.6. Oops. 0.63. You're going to get 5.99. And they will generally tell you um, where you're going to go. Always put approximately equal because this is definitely not equal to 5.99. or 5.99 is equal to 5.993. So do through, go through and do that. OK. So that is that. Um, there's some more exponent rules in section 4.2. They're in nice, colorful boxes. Be sure that you guys look at those. 
some of those are some, cover some basic things that we're going to be doing. Um, and you're old enough to be able to read. Okay, a couple things. Now, when you're solving exponential equations for now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to be playing with bases. Um, and so what you're going to end up doing is this. Now, some of you might be able to say, okay, the x is equal to 4. And that's great. It's 3 to the 4th power is 81. What you are technically doing is that you're rewriting this 81 is equal to 3 to what power? Okay, that's going to be 3 to the 4th power. So therefore, once you have the same bases, so if your bases are the same, so the bases are equal the exponents then are also equal. So then that will allow you to say, okay, now x equals 4. For the next one, you've got, you know, 4x to the 100, or 1 over 256. Um, again, same idea, but a couple of things. Um, first steps if you're not sure what to go, because again, you may see that this isn't, you know, the answer is negative 4. It's 4 to the 4th power is 16 squared, which is 256. The first thing that you need to do is recognize, okay, I need to get this so I can play with the base. So whatever 256 is, um, we need to raise to the negative first power so we can get it out of the denominator. From there, you're going to say, okay, that's like 4 to the 4th power. 256 is 4 to the 4th. How do you know that? You run numbers. I would see this is one of those instances, much like before, where I would seriously say, go 2, 4, you know, 8, 16, 32, 64, et cetera. Run those. 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. You know, run all of the powers and write them down. And if you write them down, the more often you write them down, um, what's the next one? 1024 the more likely you're going to remember them. And if you remember them, life is going to be much easier because otherwise, if you're constantly going back to your calculator, you're going to be making mistakes. You're going to forget what the steps that you were on were. Um, usually, once you get into the sixes and sevens, going three powers deep is generally enough. So that's what's going to be 343, et cetera. So 256, you're like, oh, I remember that. And then you're going to say, oh, that's a four. OK, that's four to the fourth. So that means that this is going to equal 4. And then you're going to combine these using your power rule. So you get 4 to the negative 4th power. So 4 to the x power is going to equal 4 to the negative 4th power. And then you're going to say x is equal to the negative 4. Now, again, I'm not saying that you can't just jump to the answer. That's fine. But it's important to know what the rules are. Because once you get the rules, then we can start throwing stuff like this at you. Okay? And it may not be quite so easy to figure out what x is. Because, and you're going to be needing to know what the rules are. And if you had to guess what I'm going to put on a reality check that will, you know, test, that I would expect that would test your knowledge of what's actually going on, you know, I'm probably going to err on doing problems like this than the problems on the previous slide. So first of all, you have to ask yourself, okay, we need to write this as like basis, right? With the same base. I kind of said this before, but let's be explicitly clear. Um, now, what happens when you can't write them as the same base? That's called section 4.3. Um, so 5 to the 2x plus 7. Now, again, because you have your list like back over here, oh, look, 125 is on my 5s list. That is, oops, is 5 to the 3rd. So I'm going to write this as... to the third power. Now again, this is 5 to the third technically to the x plus 6 power. Now when I raise powers to powers, that essentially goes to this. And I'm fine if you jumped right to that step. Now once you get like bases, so in a side, remember your power rules or your exponent rules. explanation point. So then to, after you have the same basis set, exponents and then solve. So in this case now, 2x plus 7 is going to equal 3 times x plus 6. So 2x plus 7, and again, welcome back to Algebra 1. 
maybe even pre-algebra, to be perfectly honest. So x is going to equal a negative 11. And of course, being the good, diligent load children that you are, excuse me, honor students that you are, plug it back in and check. So you should get, in this case, you know, 5 to the, what would be negative 22 plus 7, negative 15th power should be the same thing as 125 to the negative 5th power. And sure enough, it is. Um, just going to double check. Okay. Last ones. Um, this gets a little trickier. Um, and what you end up doing here is, again, now if you have a variable to a power, is again, what you're going to do is do the following. You're going to say, okay, b to the 5 twelfths power is going to equal 243. If you want to write 243 as something to a power, that's fine. But for right now, what you have to ask yourself is what b to the 5 halves power to which power is going to get me b to the first? Okay. And again, remember, you multiply exponents. What's the reciprocal of 5 halves? Oh, that's 2 to the fifth. I do it to one side, I get to 2 to the other. Oops, sorry. So if you do it to one side, anyway, so that's going to get me to b to the first, my apologies. I jumped the gun a little bit, because that's what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to raise this to the 2 fifth power. I'm going to raise this to the 2 fifth power. So this becomes b to the first. Now, on the other side, you're going to say, okay, you can type this in. I mean, you could technically type it in on the calculator. Um, a little bit faster if you remember that 243 is actually 3 to the fifth power. Now, at this point, you can say, oh, well, that's just going to be 5 squared, or 3 squared, um, because 5 times 2 fifths is just going to be 2. So you get that. So b to the first is going to equal 9. Now, you still need to go through and check this, because when you start raising things to powers on both sides, that's when errors and extra rate, extra things can happen. If you remember back when we were solving out root problems and when we were solving um, things, to, yeah, when we were solving to various roots and to various exponents, when we start doing that, sometimes you get extraneous solutions. So here, it is important to check. Um, so you're going to say 9 to the 5 halves power. Um, now you can do that a couple different ways. That's going to become 9 to the 1 half power. So that's just going to be 3 to the 5th power, which is 243, so we're good. Usually, if you have an extraneous solution, it will usually come out to be the opposite of whatever number that you're trying to get. And I believe that is it for now, um, which it is. And so that should take you into a good chunk of what you need to do in section 4.2. Um, if you want to start at the problems, I believe. Oh, you have that on the back of your um, rubric sheet. Um, and then we'll get into the fun stuff of what happens when we don't have like bases later. Thanks. Have a good weekend. Talk to you later.